Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're doing well and thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to talk about luminosity masking and I don't know why I just did that, um, but luminosity masking in Luminar. And so I've had a lot of questions about masking and in particular luminosity masking I think is pretty confusing to people, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It's, it's actually very simple and that is a luminosity mask is a mask that's based on light values or luminosity. And the mask is created automatically for you in Luminar when you choose the luminosity mask option. Now, before we go any further, in the old version of Aurora HDR, if you've seen it or used it, there was a zone-based system where it divided the a photo into different zones based on the light values. You could turn some on and off and all that. It's not in Aurora, it got taken out, and it's not in Luminar either. So. Feel free to leave a comment about that. I would like it to come back. So would many of you, and I've heard from many of you about that, but I don't know when it's coming back or what they're doing. They've told me that it's gonna be uh, created, uh, uh, recreated, and it's gonna be better and all that, but I don't know when, so you know, no offense, but like, don't ask. I don't have any idea. Um, but I'm talking about what we got in Luminar right now, and that is a, it's a basic luminosity mass function. So I'm gonna walk through, uh, show you what it is, and explain why it's beneficial. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is a sunset photo from Italy, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new adjustment layer. So I've got my base layer. There's no adjustments to it. This is the base photo, before and after, split screen, it's all the same because I haven't done anything. I added a new layer, and that's because you have to mask, a, a luminosity mask has to be masked on top of your other layer. So I can't create a luminosity mask on the base layer. So added layer one, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a preset. So if you don't have my Magic Hour preset pack, it's free, it's these eight presets. You can download them on my blog. Um, I'm gonna choose this Golden Hour Pop 1, and I'm gonna close the preset uh, menu. So there you go. Crazy, golden, you know, like happy orange sunset colors. There's the before and there's the after. It's very intense, right? Now, here's why luminosity masks are so valuable, and that is because they're based on light values, they will uh, apply or they create a mask that's higher opacity in, in the bright areas and lower opacity in others. And so the application of your edits is at a higher intensity in the brighter areas and at a lower intensity, intensity in the darker areas. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Keep in mind what this looks like, right? Before, after, very intense, very orange. All you do to create a luminosity mask is you go to the layer that you're on, you click on the brush, and you click on luminosity mask, and then you give it a second. It does take a moment because it's analyzing the photo and doing a lot of things, but there you go. That's your luminosity mask um, application. So as you can see, more of the intense color is occurring in the brighter areas, and less of that intense color is occurring in the darker areas. Let me show you what the luminosity mask looks like. If you wanna adjust your mask, just click on the brush on that layer, and you can just click on brush itself because all you wanna do is get to this screen here, and then you just click on the eyeball. There's your luminosity mask. And so as you can tell, higher uh, application of the mask in the brighter areas, almost limited to none application of the mask in the darker areas, like these hills over here. That island is completely black, basically. No mask there at all. And so, that's why you get a subtle implementation of the edits because the opacity is applied in varying degrees all across the photo. So one more time, there's the luminosity mask uh, and there's what the photo looks like with the mask applied. You remember what the preset looked like, it was intense. Now, if you forgot what, the, um, it, what it looked like, you can come over here and just say fill mask and there it is, right? and then you can just say clear mask to go back to the base photo, right? So I've just basically deleted the luminosity mask. And so um, I'm kind of done with it there, but that's how it works. And so what I often do is I will go in and I'm gonna get a different photo for this. I'm gonna go in and just um, apply presets and I stack presets on multiple layers and I use luminosity masks each time. So here's a photo um, from England, my recent trip before and after, right? Side to side. It's all the same, I haven't done anything. So I'm gonna add a new layer, adjustment layer, and presets, I gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna go into my Wanderlust preset pack. Now this is a pack that I sell on my blog, and I'm gonna get a particular preset called Night Shift. And there you go, there it is at 100%. It's intense, it's kind of purple, it's a night uh, designed for nights, 
uh, in the cities, that sort of thing. But when I go get the paintbrush icon and click on luminosity, give that a minute, it'll create the luminosity mask and apply it across the photo. And the purple will pretty much go away because it's done in a much more subtle manner. There you go. So now there's the before and the after, and here's the before and after. You can see it's a subtle difference. Um, and that's what's so great about luminosity masks. It's a way to apply edits in a very subtle manner. You don't have to change the brush opacity. You don't have to do all those kind of things. You can just apply a luminosity mask and it's, very, uh, it's done in a very subtle manner. I love that. Um, now let me do another, here's what I was talking about. I'll add a new adjustment layer. I'll go get another preset and this one, I'm gonna get, this is a user preset. I've got a new preset pack I'm working on. So let me find that. Some of these are gonna be coming out soon. Uh, this is a, uh, a preset pack I'm building based on my recent London trip. So there's a preset from that pack and you're, I'm sure your eyes are kind of burning, right? It looks pretty intense. And if I turn that layer off, there we were with the base layer and then layer one with the preset with the luminosity mask. Now we're on layer two. Let me turn that back on. That's at 100%, but I can come in here and say luminosity mask, choose that, you give that a minute, it'll calculate and create the luminosity mask, and then all the edits that are tied to that layer will get applied across the lumina luminosity mask um, on the photo based on the intensity of the mask in the various areas. So give that a second and it should be wrapping up. It does get slower as you're stacking it across more layers and more layers. So hopefully this is about to wrap up. Okay, boom, there we go. So you saw what that um, looked like with, uh, the, without the luminosity mask on that layer, and now you can see what it is like with the luminosity mask. Much more gentle application. So I'm turning off this layer. That was the base layer plus layer one with the luminosity mask, and now I added layer two, and there you go. So once again, you can come in here, you can click on brush, and you can go look at your mask. So there's my luminosity mask. The edits are getting applied more heavily in the areas that have more red, right? That have a higher opacity mask and they're getting applied less in the darker areas. Now here's a trick. You can go in and you can say, I like it, but what would it be like if I reversed it? So you can invert your luminosity mask. Just click on that menu, click invert. The mask is gonna flip, right? So let me hide that so you can see what it looks like. There you go. To me, that actually looks pretty good. I like it better inverted let me show you what it looked like once again, the, the, the traditional way, right? There it is, the original luminosity mask. And now here is the inverted luminosity mask. A bit more colorful and bright, and that's because if you look at the mask, it's higher intensity in the darker areas, and that's where more of the color is in the photo, so more of the color is coming through. I'm gonna leave that because I like it. Um, oh wait, you know what, there's one other thing. You can go back in here, and you can show the mask, and then you could come in and paint um, more mask in here, or you could change to erase and erase mask from over here. You can totally edit these luminosity masks to your liking if you want to. I'm not gonna do that, but that's what I could do. Um, for a final adjustment, I would just come in here and just maybe add a final layer, grab the tone filter, and I might would just um, bump up smart tone a little bit, and maybe drop the highlights a little bit, Something like that and I'm done. So here's a before and after, right? Pretty massive difference. And there's the before, there's the after. And what I did, base layer with no edits, layer one with a luminosity mask and a preset, layer two with a inverted luminosity mask and a preset, and then layer three with just the tone filter. That's luminosity mask, a, a mask that's automatically made by Luminar based on light values. It's a great way to subtly apply adjustments, presets, whatever you're doing on a particular layer. It's a great way to do that, very powerful. I think it's an amazing feature in Luminar. Hope you like it as much as I do. And if you have any questions, leave a comment, let me know. I'd love it if you shared this video with your friends on social media, that would help a lot. And if you haven't yet, subscribed, like the video, uh, that sort of thing. Thanks for watching my friends. I really appreciate it. That was a Luminar quick tip on luminosity masking. I'll see you real soon and adios.